this video tutorial we are going to give a quick overview of GoKit Lite. Uh, GoKit Lite is a tween library that's basically um, like GoKit's little sister. Whereas uh, GoKit will do anything. It'll, it'll tween any property. It gives you full control over the entire tween process. It's fully object oriented. Um, it basically does everything you could want to do with tweening. GoKit Lite is a lot more focused. It's a lot more simple and it's a lot more limited. But for a lot of people, it's also all that you need. So uh, we're just gonna run through the demo scene and explain what GoKit Lite can do and uh, and how, it, how to do it. So let's look at some code first before we do anything. Uh, GoKit Lite requires that you call init. And you can call this anytime, you can call it multiple times, it doesn't matter. As long as it's called once, GoKit Lite will be ready for use. The init function basically just uh, creates an instance of GoKit Lite and sticks it in your scene. And uh, to start off this one in the start, you can see that uh, we access all of GoKit Lite's methods from the instance property. And in this case, we're doing a position from tween. And I'll we'll go over the parameters in a second. Let's have a look at what this does. So we can see that the cube flew in here. And actually, I'm going to drop the GUI size down. That's a little large for this tiny screen. Okay, so now we can see it a little better. And you can see the, the cube just uh, flies into that position. So let's have a look at that code and see what exactly is happening there. So uh, position from method. And uh, GoKit Lite's API is, is pretty raw compared to GoKit. It's a very different beast in that regard. All the methods are uh, basic and they take in a pile of parameters and they, uh, anything that's optional just has a default value in there, so you don't have to actually pass it in. So in this particular case, uh, first thing we're passing in is cube, which is the transform for the cube. And uh, the second parameter is the duration, and we're just going to pick a random number between 0.2 and 1. And third parameter is the position we want to tween to or from. And then uh, this is a delay, the 0.5. So Goku offers from and to tweens. In, uh, in this case, we're doing a position from tween. So if we set a position from tween basically just means that uh, instead of tweening from our current position to this one, we're just going to reverse those. And we're going to tween from this one to our current position. So that's all there is to that going on there. So let's, let's have a look in the public API here. And I'm just going to clean it up there. So, okay, so, so you can see um, the position from... And now all the tweens pretty much have uh, have three required parameters, and that's going to be something to tween. In this case, we tween we only tween transforms, and uh, well, there's a material trans uh, that we also tween down below, and then your optional parameters, which all have default values, so you don't have to pass these in. So you can do a delay, you can pass in an ease function, and you can uh, pass in a boolean for relative tweens. So if you pass in, uh, if you don't pass in an easing function, there's a, there's a default easing function here. So you can set the default ease function to what, whatever you want. Uh, GoKit just sets it to a Kartik ease in, which is uh, you know, usually a pretty nice looking tween. A lot, a lot more interesting than, uh, than a standard linear. So uh, these are the things you can tween. We do positions, local positions, scale, rotation, local rotation, color, and this one's a little odd, custom action. Uh, we'll see an example of this uh, in, in a moment, but uh, it, you can see you can pass in an action, and that action will be called uh, every single frame with uh, you know, essentially using your easing function, it'll pass in a value between zero and one. Well, I guess if you do a bounce tween, it could go below or above, but uh, it'll essentially be near zero to one, and you can do whatever you want with it. You can tween anything at that point with that. So this, this is the only little piece of flexibility we, we provide with GoKit Lite, whereas GoKit, you get back a tween instance that you can do all kinds of stuff with. You can control it completely, change time scale. You can, uh, you can actually run it as a timeline, but GoKit Lite forgoes all of that for simplicity and speed. So let's have a look at the demo scene over here. We got a bunch of buttons, and uh, you can see how GoKit also has looping, and uh, we'll we'll have a look at that in a moment. So we got a position tween with one second delay and a ping pong loop. So looping is uh, is pretty easy. 
Now, what happens when you, whenever you uh, call one of the one of the actual tweens is you, like a position tween, scale tween, or any of these, you get back an instance of the tween class. The tween class that you get back is extremely limited on purpose. So if we uh, have a look at the tween class, so here's the tween class, and you can see just about everything is internal or private. There are three methods that are public, and that's it. And when using GoKit Lite, do not keep an instance of this tween around. Just use it. The reason why we, we return a tween in these is so that you can chain it for um, you know, a slightly cleaner API, but you do not want to keep a reference to the tween around. If you want to stop the tween later, you can call getID, and this ID can actually be used to stop a tween. But uh, this is all you're going to get with, uh, with the public API from that. It's just for no other reason than to have a, an API that allows chaining and you know we didn't want to add even more parameters to this here it was already it's already enough in there and things like uh, completion handlers when you're passing in actions it's it's a lot cleaner when you can pass that in as the last parameter it just makes your code more readable so to, to facilitate that we just made it a method here that's chainable and you can see how we do the chain here so we do the position two tween and then we we chain the dot set loop type method and you can uh, you set your your loop type of either a ping pong or a restart from beginning and the number of iterations for the loop so position tweens pretty basic scale tweens so I mean, all these are pretty much the same now so I'm not going to go over these at all but you can look through the demo scene and play around with it I mean we'll give them a look but there isn't too much to see here so uh, we have rotations relative rotation so this is a little tricky to see so let's just zoom in on this guy so relative uh, when you're dealing with rotations is um, is actually pretty handy because uh, in this case if we were to do a rotation of 360 degrees that isn't relative the cube wouldn't rotate because uh, it's already there there's no it, it's uh, go kit light will, will always choose the the nearest angle to tween through and uh, when you do a relative tween with uh, with this, you can actually uh, rotate it any way you want, and any number of degrees through the rotation. And relative position works similarly. So if we, you can see that in this particular case, it's just going to move a little bit each time. Let's have a look at that relative code up here. So this is the relative position tween, and we're just going to move over one unit a unit, and this is where we're passing in if it's relative or not. So we pass in true as this last parameter. And that lets it just kind of creep over one unit a unit each time we call it. Okay. On to the custom action. So I mentioned before that you can also do a custom action tween. And this is basically the, the internals of GoKit Lite are, are using something really similar to this where all they're doing is calling a method over and over again and passing in some time that uh, that's going to be relatively you know close to zero to one now again the circular and the bounce tween sometimes go outside those bounds and they might go a little less than one or a little over one but for the for the most part it's just going to be something between zero and one so i'm going to just bring our cube back to back to home base here so we can have a look at this so this is um this is going to be the action that gets called. Let's just throw this right here. So we're, we're creating an action. It has to take in a transform and a float. And the transform is whatever transform we pass in here. And we're going to get the delta time from GoKit Lite. So in this particular case, uh, I mean, this is a, a trivial example. And it's something you could do with the color tween the, over here with the color two. But we're just going to see how this action can be used in the most simple manner that we could think of. So you grab the, the color from the material and you set the alpha to dt. Remember this, this delta is going to be uh, actually in this particular case we're using a back e so it actually will go uh, a touch below zero. It's going to be the unity will actually end up uh, just making a zero so that probably wasn't the, the best example of of uh, easing to use. Let's do a linear. So linear will go from 0 to 1 linearly. So now all we're doing is applying this dt directly as the alpha. So it'll it'll be some number between 0 and 1 at all times, which fits exactly what we want for our alpha. And then we set the color. 
And uh, in this particular case, we also chained a completion handler on that just sticks a debug log, letting us know the custom action's done. So if we go over here, and since we made a modification, oh, we have ease none, because linear does not have ease in and out. And if we come over here now and we, uh, we take a look at our custom action, you can see when we click it, the alpha goes to zero. And we have the reverse here, the alpha going to one, and uh, the log prints out, all done with custom action. So the reverse is uh, alpha going to, oh, I did those backwards actually. <laughs> Alpha uh, going to one is is uh, dt directly, and alpha going to zero is uh, is actually you just do one minus dt. So remember, dt is always going to be something between zero to one, assuming we have a linear in here, which we now do. And color tweens work the same way. Uh, the color cycler this is a, a pretty ugly bit of code, but it's just uh, showing you one way to handle chaining a couple tweens together. Let's first take a look at what it does. So when we click on, we change that code, so we have to restart. So color cycler will go to blue, then to red, and then to green, and then to red, and back and forth. So all we're doing here is uh, we're doing a color two tween and going to blue. And then when that completes in the completion handler, we're then doing a color two tween to red. And then when that completes, we're doing uh, a color tween to green and we're looping that one 10 times ping pong style. So that's um, that's a pretty ugly way to handle doing a queue of operations and uh, the minute that was written is when uh, the tween queue class came into existence which we'll have a look at now. Uh, there's also a stress test included with uh, with GoKit Lite but there's really no code that's of, uh, of any use to look at there. All it is is position tweens, nothing fun. So tween chains Let's have a look at these. So what we basically did with that horrible bit of code over there here is, uh, is create a chain. So once one tween finishes, another one starts, and it can go on down the line like that. The, the tween chaining API isn't the most, um, most pretty thing I've ever seen either, but uh, it's, it's a little easier to read. And uh, this is all, these tween queues and tween flows that we're going to look at next are all written completely separate from the GoKit engine. So if you don't want them in your project, you can just delete the files. So GoKit Lite's core is extremely light. And that's exactly how we wanted it. That was the purpose of GoKit Lite, was to be light. So these are just, uh, you know, little uh, value adds that, that aren't actually part of the GoKit engine itself, but they're useful. So a tween queue is a queue of tweens, exactly how it sounds. In this particular case, what we're, uh, what we're doing is we're creating a tween queue, then we're adding a position, and actually we're adding five position tweens. So let's go have a look at what this does. So it queues up the tweens like you'd expect. Uh, this particular example, the second one in there, just throws a delay in there. And uh, position queue with delays, you can see that the first one happens immediately, but then we do a 0.2 second delay for each one. This one's a little more interesting. We uh, we do a position, then rotation, then position, then rotation, and just alternate them. So you can see it just moves, rotates, moves, rotates. And we threw a, a completion handler in here. The tween Q class has its own completion handler, so you know when it's done. And the lots of stuff Q just does a bunch of stuff, position, color, rotation, and scale. So you can see it's just uh, queuing all these things together and makes for some uh, some fancy stuff there. You can almost emulate a path doing stuff like that. Now, this is going to look a, a little odd if you're not familiar with, uh, with actions and funk objects. So what the add method takes in is... Uh, takes in a system.func that returns a tween. So it returns go quit, go quit tween. So the reason um, we need to do that is the go quit light system, as soon as you call position two, it's, you know, remember it's API, it's really basic. The, the moment you call position two, this tween is added and it's running. And there's uh, there's no, no way to pause tweens. They're either running or they're not. That's all there is to it. 
And the moment you stop it, it's completely dead and wiped away. So what we, uh, the only way we were able to, to pull this off was to have, a, again, a slightly ugly API, but it works. So the add method takes in that funk object, and you can uh, just pass in this, basically. You, just, you create yourself an anonymous function and just return your tween. So for each one of these ads, we're just creating an anonymous function that does nothing more than returns this tween. And uh, the way this works now is this this position, like these other tweens, these aren't going to be run. Anything that's added to this queue will not be run immediately. It'll only be run when the tween queue actually calls this func that you passed in, this function pointer. Well, not really a function pointer, but uh, close enough. And uh, that's basically how, how GoKit handles this. And similarly, when we look at the tween flows, it's, it's the same basic idea where a tween flow is... Uh, going to take in the same thing. It's going to take in a fun function that returns a tween. And uh, being a flow, it's also going to take in a start time for each of these. So let's have a look at these. Um, so this one dumps a log so that it explains what's actually happening. And if we just take a look at the code, it's uh, you know, once you get used to looking at it, it's pretty simple. You can see at, at time zero, we do a position tween. At time one, we do a rotation. At time two, we do a rotation, time three rotation, and so on. So let's uh, let's go look at this and see what it does. All right, so we have a position tween that's happening. And this one lasts five seconds. And then each second, we do a 0.5 second rotation. So let's have a look at that again. So you can see... It's a slow position tween, and it's showing how you can overlap tweens. Now you're gonna to wanna to be careful not to, not to do a position tween the five seconds and then start overlapping other position tweens because they're gonna fight with each other. But uh, you can, you can uh, tween any other parameters while that's happening. And the second example is uh, we do uh, bounce and tween color. So let's just t take a look at the code here. So we create a tween flow and we do a position tween of all these are, are of duration one second. We do a, a, a position tween every second that lasts one second. So it's just a, a constantly changing position. And then uh, we add to this flow some colors. And the colors are happening uh, 0.2 seconds after each of the position tweens happen. So the colors are basically going to happen just after each of the positions begin to move. And uh, one thing about flow is it's a little different than, uh, than tween queues and anything else is you have to call the start method in the start coroutine. And that's because the flow itself does all the management of its state uh, as opposed to GoKit Lite handling it. And the uh, reason for that, again, is to keep GoKit Lite really lean. The, the internals of it are super fast and super lean. So let's have a look at what this... Oops, didn't mean to click that. So let's have a look at the bounce and tween color. So we do some bounces and the color tweens as we're bouncing. Pretty simple. And uh, that's that's about it for uh, for GoKit Lite. That that covers all the features that it has. It's officially feature complete. We're not gonna well, hopefully this time we're not gonna uh, add anything more to it. And uh, that's gonna be the end of that. And uh, we'll we'll take some bug fixes as time goes on. But uh, if we find any, but as of right now, it's uh, it's looking pretty solid. Thanks for watching.